All right, so listen up because what happened last week to the S&P 500 is very important. What we saw last week was a major scale liquidity grab above the previous high that was set on March 4th. Now, after this high was set, there was some downside that we saw into Tuesday, and it was followed by a quick squeeze to the upside to then go back above this level. Now, this is where it gets crazy. We saw it continue up, and if you go to the hourly chart, this paints an even better picture. We saw it continue to go up into Friday of last week and stay above where the previous high was. However, the second hourly candle of Friday was a major invalidation slash rejection candle, and it continued with that bearish bias for the rest of the session to close back below where the previous high was set on Monday. This is very critical, guys, because there's clearly a large seller that stepped in or sellers plural in this case. That's the most likely scenario that happened up here and was able to push price a lot lower afterwards. Going forward, as long as we remain below roughly 518 on the S&P 500, there likely is going to be more downside. So I would recommend you put something round 518. And if we were to cross it above, we're looking at the continuation of the aggressive uptrend. Otherwise, as long as we remain below here, we can see a larger dip back down to around 500 on the S&P 500. So because of how substantial this rejection was up here, and because structure wise, we went above where the previous high was on Monday to grab liquidity up here at a new all time high, and then it rejected afterwards. That's two very bearish concepts. Because of that, we know that there is a higher likelihood of continuation downward as long as we remain below here. And this level up here will give us a risk going into this week because, again, like I just said, if we were to go above here, we're looking at continuation of the aggressive uptrend. And if it can stay below, we're looking at continuation downward. So any type of short setup, if we were to have a retracement bounce up to around, let's say, 515, 516, any short setup can look at about a 15 minute close above this level as being the risk for that setup, which is great to know because obviously trading is not just about potential reward. It's about how can you mitigate your risk for an enhanced potential reward. That's two things, two things you need to keep in mind and that's gonna help with your longevity in the market. So this was important from uh, this past week. I personally like to see this from a macro topping process thesis. I actually believe we're in some type of a topping process before a correction. And I believe the uptrend will resume after that correction. But if you look over here um, at QQQ, and I'll get back to NVIDIA in a second, you can see here we also rejected had a hard rejection of uh, the supply zone that which now formed uh, from up here. So a break back above the supply zone would continue that uptrend as well, which would align with the S&P 500 breaking back above roughly 518. But again, as long as it can remain below, in this case, QQQ remaining below around 446, we can see some more downside. The difference with QQQ here, though, is you can see a lot of consolidation for the past month above this 433.60 level. You can see it's tested it numerous times. We had a retest over here on the hourly uh, back on February 9th. We had it over here, February 22nd, and then even more recently on March 8th. Fifth, there was a retest. So three key retests that resulted in bounces every single time. So going forward, if we were to break below this 433.60 level, we're looking at a macro bearish pivot on the NASDAQ. The reason being is if it were to break below decisively below this 433.60 level, all of this consolidation up here would be distribution. And of course, when you see distribution, especially lengthy distribution for about a month, uh, then you can have an eventual, a large move uh, following that, in this case, to the downside, since it would be your distribution. The inverse would apply, of course, if you were to see a breakout back above the high that was just uh, set over here, since that would mean that the uptrend was still intact and all of this could act as accumulation. So it's crucial to know what side uh, that you're breaking down from. That's why it's always good to look for confirmation. In this case, below 40, 33, uh, 60 would provide that confirmation of further downside. That's my bias at the moment. Of course, it's great to uh, see that confirmation form first before entering some type of a trade setup. But my personal bias, as I shared with you guys last week, is we're within that topping process. And I also shared in this video uh, not that long ago, is we're within this topping process. And there's going to be some type of a correction afterwards. My sights are on that previous all time high level for the SP 500, which would set us right about, if you go back to over here, and actually I'll go to the daily chart to look at this, you can see that previous all time high level is roughly around 4. 
79480. That's about 4,800 on SPX. Uh, so that's what I'd like to see get retested. And then it can decide if it wants the uptrend to continue or if it wants to go a little bit lower to retest this uh, key downtrend level, which preferably I'd like to see get retested because from a structural perspective, a retest of this downtrend um, is actually very bullish going forward. Uh, we've seen that before in previous downtrends over here back in the 2022 correction slash bear market. We had a retest after it broke out. We saw the breakout of that trend line right here. It retested it and then continued a lot higher. Like I just said, from a structural aspect, when you have these retests, that's even more bullish because the retest held, continued up higher afterwards. So we saw something like that over here that would also be very bullish. And additionally, this is a golden pocket for Fibonacci. If you use Fibonacci, is the around the 0.5 retracement uh, for around here. So a lot of convergence for support around here, which is why I'd love to see this get retested, be an amazing long opportunity this year. Obviously, we're very high up uh, from there. And right now, at least in the shorter term, a period of around one to two months. I only can see around 4,800 getting retested, but it's good to reevaluate with time um, if that does take place. So I like what I see so far on here. We saw a nice uh, rejection candle on the daily and also uh, the weekly showed a bit of a rejection as well from around that 418 level that I just referenced. And going forward, at least in the short term, what we can see is this hard rejection from up here and a relatively short-term bearish bias as long as we remain below. So risk can be applied based on this level. Um, another thing I do wanna mention from last week, Nvidia flow, very interesting because if you go back to the chart over here, go to Nvidia, we also had a hard rejection. A lot of QQQ's recent upside has been from semiconductors and having a hard rejection in Nvidia and just semiconductors in general, which followed in suit um, is something that is a change. Now, obviously every dip so far in Nvidia has been bought up and there's a lot of supports below here that it's likely gonna retest this week. So it's gonna be important to see how those supports um, are supportive for the price, um, if they are supportive enough to continue um, up to the upside. But based on what we saw from Friday, this is a hard rejection candle, uh, not only on the hourly, but also the daily. So that's important to know um, going forward. Same thing with QQQ. If we see it get back above where this high was on Friday, the uptrend is likely to continue. At the moment though, this is a hard rejection and is bearish in the short term that we saw this. And obviously semiconductors are gonna have a major effect on the general market because NASDAQ has been following them very closely as of recent. So that's why I'm looking at Nvidia and based on the flow that we saw from Nvidia last week, it started to get a bit more mixed on Friday. You saw a lot more puts starting to hit the tape. These were in the money ones, but relatively short-term expiration, which is a change because as you guys know, if you've been following not only this YouTube channel, but also the a Twitter account for Cheddar Flow, there's been a ton of bullish prints on Nvidia day after day after day. So a lot of this bearish and this is certainly something new and it was warranted on the day because of the rejection we had. So it's not necessarily something that's gonna give us clues for the long term or let's say the one to three month picture on Nvidia. What's gonna give us clues for that time frame is if we see it this week as well, a continuation on not only the sell that we saw technical wise, but also the flow. If we see flow like this, going into this week and throughout the week, that's certainly a large shift because really we haven't seen bearish flow past more than one, maybe two days over the course of the last three plus months. It's been overwhelmingly bullish um, day after day with the occasional bearish flow for a very minor pullback intraday. Uh, but as you can see here, it certainly changed a bit to become more bearish. We saw a lot more call selling, as you can see over here, as well as that put buying, especially near the end of the day. So if we see that continue to be the case throughout this week or this upcoming week, that is, um, we can also see a shift in market structure for not only Nvidia, but the market in general, since it has been following, like I said. So that's why I'm paying attention to Nvidia this week. And the last thing I wanna mention here is dark pull levels from last week. One of the critical ones we saw was a little bit earlier on in the week over here, and I'll scroll down to it. You can see over here, we had a substantial $3.3 billion signature dark pull print at 5.12.30. Now what's interesting about that is if you go to SPY over here, we closed below that print on not only the daily, but also the weekly. That is critical. So that is another reason why, at least in the short term, this seems like a bearish setup um, at the moment. Of course, there's still key supports that have to break for that to flip to a macro bearish setup to get us back to my desired first target of 4,800 on SPX. But we did close below that on the daily and weekly. 
there is a retest on Monday of this 512.30 level, or at least the range around here. That's definitely something that's going to be important to watch for, especially if there is a rejection and bears are keeping true to their word, uh, that they're actually starting to step in and start to sell um, a bit more since they've been getting squeezed out mainly for the last couple of months so far. Um, and also another caveat to this order, it's a $3.3 billion order at the 512.30 level, but one cent under is about a billion. So realistically, this is a $4.3 billion um, signature dollar pool print order. So a bit of a caveat there, uh, but it is only about one cent difference. Uh, so you can count both of these together. And of course, anything over 4 billion is certainly substantial. So it's something to watch for this week, especially if we have a retest, like I just said, we'll get a glimpse into if bears are legit about the sell-off we saw on Friday because they'll have to continue to sell um, any short-term bounces that they see. But realistically, that was the largest print we saw from last week. Nothing too crazy above that. 1.2 billion over here. That's nothing um, insane. That's the meat of last week in terms of premium. It's going to be interesting to see what happens early on this week. Like I just said, if that gets retested. Um, but other than that, as always, appreciate you guys watching this video and I'll see you next time.